Now, the Supreme Court decision today, 9 to 0 was the vote. But the vote conceals what really took place and should be very concerning to those, those of us who are constitutionalists. The 14th Amendment, Section 3, we've talked about ad infinitum. I was the first to really address this, to confront it. I said, this is what they're doing. This is what they want to do, is to take Trump off the ballot, claim insurrection, and all the rest. The five justices in the majority were 100% correct. They said, look, essentially, Congress determines... Congress determines if the federal constitutional's 14th Amendment is violated. I would have gone much further. President's not mentioned on the list of candidates, office holders. This amendment would never, ever had applied to a matter of federalism since indeed the Civil War had just been won, and they were not going to confer power on states to make a determination about insurrection and whether or not a president could be on the ballot. The president was specifically, specifically not placed in Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, period. Look, look as you might. You have people saying, well, Congress doesn't say Congress makes the only decision. Well, actually, Section 5 is does, but let's put that aside. It's a federal case. It's a federal matter. I would even argue, you know, they say, oh, the the majority went too far. No, it didn't. So what am I talking about? Here's the deal. You have four justices who don't care about the Constitution. The three radical leftists Sotomayor, Kagan, and Jackson. They said, just overturn Colorado and be done with it. Don't go any further. And they claim, in essence, to be federalists, which, of course, they're not. They're leftists. Now, do you want to know why they did that? They did that because they know that communist Marxists like Jamie Raskin, who's done it before in other electoral college counts that take place on January 6th, will object to the, the counting of the ballots for Trump and claim that he's an insurrectionist. Now, it likely wouldn't go anywhere. But nonetheless, that's his plan. And the three Democrat Radical justices are in on the plan. I don't mean they've talked to, to them. It's just obvious that they, they're trying to protect it so they can, in fact, pursue that. Barrett. Barrett is very worried about the media and politics. She actually is a very, very poor justice. And she says, hey, look. At least we got to nine. That's what the country needs to see, that we got to nine. I think the majority went too far. I can't agree with the, with the minority. But then again, I've become a rhino, a Washington insider, and that's how I think. She thinks she's new, the new Sandra Day O'Connor. But if you read the Constitution, the fact of the matter is, even the majority opinion seems to be somewhat of a compromise. This is a slam dunk case. Slam dunk. You can't have a person in Maine or a court in Colorado or a former traffic cop, excuse me, ticket judge in Illinois affecting a federal election like this. And even if you look at this situation as As a matter of insurrection, Donald Trump was not convicted of any insurrection. He wasn't charged with any insurrection, except in the Democrat House of Representatives and the Senate found President Trump not guilty. Nine to zero, that's a good day in that regard, but here's the problem. 
that same division, that same animosity, that same political partisanship, particularly by the three, is going to have a huge impact on the immunity decision. This was easy for John Roberts. It was easy for Kavanaugh. This was an easy one. It really was. It was low-hanging fruit, but even Barrett was incapable of handling it in the three Democrats while they want to protect the uh, the Biden administration and they want to protect Raskin and their ilk. The majority said that's enough for shutting this crap down. But that division is there. That's what today showed me. That division is there. It's going to be there in the immunity case. It's going to be there in the potentially the obstruction case. People have raised the issue of using the Enron obstruction issue. And, of course, it's going to be there should Donald Trump's lawyers, I hope they will, raise the issue of whether Jack Smith is constitutionally appointed or not. These are the big decisions. This was an easy one. And yet there was that division. There's way too much politics going on in this court by the leftists. Way too much. And their opinion reeks of politics. Their opinion reeks of anti-Trumpism. And Barrett said, can't we all get along? She's the Rodney King of the court. And so this will potentially, I would even go further, likely have an impact on a couple of these justices that voted among the nine who were appointed by Republicans. That is, this was an easy one. A little complicated for Barrett because she's really playing a different role, and that's how she views it. They're all looking for legacy. They're all reading the media. But it is possible. I'm not making predictions. I'm just telling you what I see. Of course, I could be wrong. But what I see from here, as I'm not inside the court, is that Roberts, potentially Kavanaugh, Barrett, are going to be weak, particularly Roberts and Barrett, when it comes to immunity and when it comes to some of these other issues. I just want you to be alerted to this because as I've said maybe for 10 years now we live in a post-constitutional America. We can no longer rely on the virtue and prudence of many judges and justices. Not all, but many. So while everybody's celebrating this 9-0 to zero, I see some writing on the wall that I don't like. That concerns me, the kind of approach that some of these justices are going to bring to the job. And just remember, Jackson skyrocketed to the Supreme Court. She'd been a district judge. She skyrocketed to the Supreme Court. Just remember Sotomayor, next to... Harry Blackman is one of the dumbest justices in American history. And Kagan, of course, is a Clinton hack. A Clinton hack who never served one day on any court, and I don't even know if she ever litigated. A Harvard law professor and the like. So this is my take. Some people have written in Nashville, this is a sloppy court decision. It's not a sloppy court decision. The court is broken into pieces right now. And the problem is the leftists on the court have no compunction about what they're doing whatsoever. And I love it when you have these people in the media today. You know, you cannot distinguish between so-called news people and people at The View or so forth and so forth. The media have so corrupted themselves and destroyed the entire profession that they see their job now is to do everything they can to destroy the credibility of the court. I'm telling you now what's going on in the court. You have this former federal judge, Michael Ludig, who's made a 
complete ass out of himself. Lawrence Tribe, who I don't think is even with it anymore, complete ass out of himself. And you have all these legal analysts who say, we have a shot at this and so forth. Buffoons. Absolute clowns. But it's worse than this. And I get credit where credit is due, and I've talked about this myself. These issues have come to the fore because of Jack Smith. These issues have come to the fore because of leftists who are litigating in state courts. These issues have come to the fore because of Democrat district attorneys and a Democrat attorney general in New York. The Supreme Court is busy because the Democrat Party is trying to litigate its way into the White House. Civilly, criminally, local, state, federal. That's what they're doing. They may succeed. I've told you now, I don't know how long, that the goal of Jack Smith and the others is to get a conviction on any count, just one count, so they can call Donald Trump a felon. Over and over again, they're trying to provide Joe Biden and the DNC and his campaign with commercials. Do you really want a felon as president and a felon and a jury found a felon and a felon? That's what they're doing. This is evil. These people are evil. They're mouthpieces in the media. They're evil. They don't care about the country. They're grifters. They're trying to create their own legacies. They're trying to demonstrate that they have influence. And they're all Democrats, every damn one of them. 